Since 1868, mechanical engineering has grown from a humble two-room laboratory to one of the top-ranked programs in the world. Many visionary and dedicated scholars contributed to this remarkable transformation, starting with Mortimer Cooley, who built the first mechanical engineering laboratories and taught students about steam engines and water wheels. With the explosion of innovation at the turn of the century, more courses and research topics would be added, some becoming their own departments, like naval architecture and marine engineering, aerospace engineering, and biomedical engineering. One of the longest running fields in the department has been automotive engineering. Walter Ley, who graduated from the program in 1915, joined the faculty and led many early areas of automotive research, like streamlining cars, determining optimal highway grades, and improving car safety and comfort. The department was always kind of at the front edge of where engineering was happening. At the auto lab, which I was a part of for uh, many years, we had facilities that were absolutely outstanding. Now, as we have seen the maturation and the expansion of the department and really recognize that when we're talking about auto and technology, every aspect of engineering is involved. It's really, to me, a demonstration of what I call good systems thinking. This led to the establishment of the Automotive Research Center in 1994 which grew into a consortium of six universities collaborating with both government and industry, and now helps lead the development of autonomous vehicles. We're dealing with an extraordinarily complex world today, and you have to try to take advantage of the complexity and do things that are really going to provide an appropriate movement forward. Another area that the department led from very early on was manufacturing, beginning with Orlin Boston. Boston started manufacturing in the department. This was very fundamental, first time that some equations and signs came into the metal cutting. Before his time, people did not pay attention to tool life. If you have to change tools, how often to change, he developed models of how to do it. Jim Doderstadt became Dean of Engineering 1991. One of the changes that he made was in manufacturing. He formed a center called CREAM, Center for Robotics and Integrated Manufacturing. And the idea was to change completely the manufacturing research, which was a repetition of what Boston started in 1940. They did the same in 1980. My area of expertise was to add mathematical tools and to add the control theory into the manufacturing processes. And Semu, he was the first person who brought statistics into the metal cutting industry. In 1984, the National Science Foundation started offering large grants to form important university industry partnerships called Engineering Research Centers, or ERCs. The first ERC granted to the University of Michigan was for reconfigurable manufacturing systems led by Yoram Korn, Gallup Ulsoy, and Jun Yi, who studied under Sam Wu. We are very proud because we did something that nobody has done in the United States. It was a slow-moving industry, and we added the new ideas, the new science, and the, we made a, a dramatic change in the traditional manufacturing industry. Beyond the very practical applications of cars and manufacturing, the department also expanded the use of science and engineering in the form of applied mechanics. Stephen Timoshenko was a major player in solid mechanics in this country in the late 30s, and he came to the University of Michigan and created a lot of courses. Timoshenko introduced a lot of mathematical reasoning into engineering. Up till then, there was a lot of resistance to using mathematics and engineering. Timoshenko was the god because his books on elasticity, meaning uh, how bodies that deform were the standard texts and uh, all the professors who were teaching elasticity referred to, the, to his solutions and not only the solutions, the way he was approaching uh, uh, problems and arrive at the solutions intuitively. The depth of understanding brought on by the traditional applied mechanics people has really helped make mechanical engineering more sophisticated in its applications. And nowadays, these applications are all the way from new medical devices to developing new kinds of materials for new kinds of applications. 
the mechanical engineering department continued to bring in new disciplines that would have been unthinkable decades earlier, like the integration of biology with the field of biomechanics. When the soldiers came home, there were a lot of people that needed um, artificial limbs. And that was really the beginning of um, sort of organized biomechanics research in this country. And then orthopedic surgery uh, took advantage of biomechanics to develop internal prostheses, artificial hips and knees. And then gradually cardiovascular biomechanics with the development of artificial hearts and heart valves. In 1983, the Biomechanics Research Lab was established by Albert Schultz, performing important research in spinal mechanics as well as balance and falls in the elderly. There are a lot of people here who have an innate interest in how the body works in one way or another. And Michigan is a fantastic place to do biomechanics research because it has a really good uh, medical school and dental school just a mile away. One unique feature of uh, University of Michigan is it's very comprehensive and multidisciplinary. Uh, in fact, we have over 100 programs that are ranked uh, top 10 in the university. And this kind of environment encourages people to work together and cross the discipline. The faculty, students, staff, and alumni of mechanical engineering have made fundamental and lasting impacts on the country and the world. They have designed new technologies and new curricula, they have served as leaders at the college, the university, and beyond. They have received patents and have started companies, and they have been recognized nationally and internationally. The most exciting thing for a faculty member and his students is to make a difference. So the fact that two or three people working in a lab in Gigi Brown can affect millions of people in a positive manner is satisfying, but the problem with research is there's always the next problem to solve. We have a lot of work to do. And when I look at uh, the faculty today, I look at the leadership in the department, what we see is a continuation of that level of excellence. The mechanical engineering department, and what it does is right at the very top of what's happening in this important field. With the new buildings and the new labs and so on, it looks it. It looks like a big scientific endeavor. But mechanical engineering, I feel, encompasses a lot of different areas that are critical to the university as a whole. And I'm really very proud and I'm very happy.